All right, so remember this is the receiver we have now, and the new one is the new Denon AVR4700H. So why did I pick that receiver? Well, again, we talked about some future proofing. This is the first Denon receiver that has a true 8K uh, HDMI 2.1 port on the back. So I'll be using that to connect uh, TV to the receiver. And uh, so again, this is future proofing. So it's got multiple HDMI 2.1 ports on the back. And in my case, everything's going to be going directly to the TV. In other words, the TV is going to be the hub of the system instead of the receiver. Although in the short term, I'm going to have to, I'm going to be running my Blu-ray player through the new receiver to get better sound. What I've had to do now is the, um, my existing receiver, when I ran the blue, my existing Blu-ray player, the Samsung, in through that, uh, the picture quality on the TV wasn't that great. When I ran the Blu-ray player directly into the TV, picture quality was much better because the upscaling of the TV worked a lot better going directly from the uh, Blu-ray player uh, to the TV instead of through the old uh, receiver. So with the new receiver, I'm expecting to be able to pass through that signal without any processing by this receiver and I can have, again, have the TV uh, do all the uh, video processing. But in this case, the sound will be coming out of the receiver because it will split that off as it goes through. Right now, I've got the receiver hooked up to the TV using the optical output. Because this, this receiver is so old, it doesn't have, even have regular arc, let alone e-arc. <clears throat> so to get consistent sound working, I had to uh, run an optical out of the back of the TV into here. So all I'm getting for sound is, is pure direct, which is just, you know, seven channel stereo. So I'm not getting any surround sound right now. So with the new receiver, which is coming a week from today, I'll be able to get full surround sound, Atmos, and uh, the, the compressed Atmos out of uh, any DVDs I have over here, compressed sound. Uh, and then when I get the new uh, uh, Xbox Series X, which has a 4K uh, Blu-ray disc in it that has full uncompressed Atmos sound coming out of it, I'll, I'll be able to have full uh, uh, Atmos sound, which would be the best I can do for my current setup. So we'll get the Xbox Series X will go directly to the TV. I won't. I won't run that through the receiver. So. That's the current plan. I just realized I can install my speakers now. I don't have to wait till the receiver shows up. So I'll work on that. And once I have those installed, I'll show you, I'll give you another video update on uh, the speaker installation. And then when the receiver shows up, I can do a full uh, walkthrough of the whole system. So that'll be great in about a week. All right, so it's got this uh, ball and a one quarter by I think it's 20 thread on it. So you put the ball in here, screw it into this uh, base, this bracket. Tighten it up a little bit and then you can screw this into here. As far as it'll go. That's it. <clears throat> and then this is super strong, so it can hold the speaker at any angle you want. Just tighten this up. So that'll work for our surround backs. And I'll show you how the bracket fits on the wall. So this bracket just comes off like this. So you mount this on the wall with uh, four screws, then you can just slide this in. that and then there's a, there's a capture screw on the top where you can put it in to keep it from slipping out. I guess on an earthquake or something it could slip out. <clears throat> now for the speaker that's in the cabinet, uh, these uh, o, OWM3 speakers come with a, uh, a little stand so that, that'll just fit in the cabinet like this. We're also going to be using these speakers for our front uh, Atmos speakers. So for that, 
for those two, I'll again use this mount up on the wall, high above the TV. Up in that area, I'll move that uh, picture out of the way, and on the other side. They're supposed to be in line with the uh, front speakers, so I'll just put them over to the, that side, then point them. Uh, using a laser, point them to the center of the couch. So that should work for those. I'm going to have to uh, do some new wiring for the uh, front speakers, front uh, Atmos speakers, height speakers. So I'm going to use this uh, 16 gauge media bridge uh, speaker wire. It's white again, so it won't show. So I'll put uh, banana plugs for the side that goes into the uh, receiver, and then I'll put uh, pins on the side that goes into the speakers themselves. So the receiver will have banana plugs and the speakers will have the pins, so they'll be secure. All right, so we've got the end of our speaker here, speaker wire, so we've got to cut this sheath away. So we first start out with some dull scissors so we don't cut anything. It's a good way to start. Start peeling this off. And there's a there's a nylon uh, string in here. Try to expose that. If we can get a hold of that, see the nylon string there, and we can pull on it. And now we'll cut away the sheath without hurting the wires. So we need we need a little bit of free wire here because we're gonna when it connects to the back of the speaker, the receiver needs a little bit of play. So that should be enough. About uh, one, two, three, four inches or so. All right, then we can use our dull scissors again and cut off this sheath. Less likely to cut the wire. Also cut the string. We don't really need the string anymore, so. All right, so this is uh, 16 gauge wire. As you saw, let me show you again. 16 gauge wire from Media Bridge. And it's got red and black, so that's handy, so we can make sure we connect the right ones to the right ones, which is important. Then we use our wire strippers. I don't have those fancy automatic ones, so I just got these manual ones. So We only need about 3 eighths of an inch exposed on the end here, because of the way these connectors work. So we just uh, put it in the 16 hole, and then pull it out like that. That's probably okay. It might be a little bit too much. We can cut it off. Try to get this a little shorter. Yeah, so that's about all you need. So I'll cut this other one off a little bit. Using a Lyman's pliers here. All right. All right, so we're going to do the pin side here. So these are the pins that go into the uh, speakers, and these are the banana plugs that go into the back of the receiver. So, so we're going to make sure we line up the colors, obviously. So we got red and red. So you unscrew the bottom of this, and then you push this wire up to the bottom. You make a little mushroom. Bend over the top of this. You got to make sure you don't go onto the the. Uh, We'll go on to the uh, threads there, otherwise it will uh, won't work. Here's the top of our pin. So we've got the wire there. We screw this on. Screw it down tight. All right, and then we pull out a little bit to make sure it doesn't come out. So same thing with the black one. Here's the black pin. So we unscrew the bottom of that. Up to the bottom, make a little mushroom, spread the wires out in all the directions as possible. Yeah, that's pretty good. Screw this on.
tight, get a little tug. Okay. Now we need to put our shrink tubing on. So I just realized I should have put this on first. So we're gonna this this is the um, this is the shrink tubing that will fit over the connector. But this is too big. This is too big for uh, it won't shrink down enough to cover this. So we want some strain relief on the end of these wires so they don't they don't get loose. So so I was gonna put a couple layers of shrink tubing over the wires down in here. So that way, there's less. Uh, this this will shrink. Up. This bigger one will shrink onto those. So I need to take these off and install these other pieces first, and then I can put these back on. So I'll just I'll just do that off camera and show you when I get done with it. All right, so I got this ready to go now. So I take the smallest diameter shrink tubing, put that over first. I cut that a little bit longer than the other one, and then here's the medium sized one. This will go over here. That's not, this one's too long. I want to use this one. This is about a little over an inch. This one's about maybe three quarters of an inch. And then uh, once the uh, connector's back on, I'll put this over it. So the black side's all ready to go. So we're going to shrink these first. So you can see the smallest one's a little bit longer. And it'll uh, shrink better. So we're going to shrink this one. Then we'll take this bigger piece and shrink it on top of this. So it's kind of a three-step process. All right. So these two should shrink together just fine. I'll just do it this way. So here's our heat gun. It's just a paint stripper. Put it on low. I'm wearing gloves, so my hands don't get too hot. You see it shrinking. And that's about it. That's all we need, I think. All right, so we've shrunk. So now this is a lot fatter. So when we put this over it, this will be able to shrink and squeeze onto this. So let's do that now. Make sure this is tight. Yeah, okay. So we're covering up this black plastic here, but we're using black shrink tubing, so we know this is the black wire. So there's no problem identifying it. All right, we'll shrink this. Alright, I would say that's a good one. So now you can see we have some strain relief. So these wires should last a long time and they won't uh, have any problems. So we'll just do the other ones and then we'll do the other side with the banana plugs. Then we'll have our wires ready to go to hook up our uh, new Atmos speakers. So remember for the other speakers we're just going to reuse the wires we already have so that'll save a lot of time. So.